The second D is a decarbonization, which means turning the entire fossil fuel industry around the world on its head and redoing the entire logic of energy, redoing the logic of pollution and climate change into a circular economy, into sustainable systems, going away from fossil fuel, oil, gas and coal into alternative fuels that we've been cultivating for a long time, including, of course, on the top of that list, solar energy, wind energy, renewable energy, renewable fuels, for example, sustainable airline fuels, and, of course, ultimately, second generation nuclear power and possibly fusion power. Big discussion about whether that basket is going to be solving everything. But clearly, we have the technology for this. We have to put our money into this. We have to take the $5.6 trillion of global fossil fuel fuel subsidies and put that into green subsidies and shift the whole thing around to be a better emphasis on sustainable energy and sustainable solutions. Basically, my view, the circular economy, which puts everything back in its place and recycles and redoes and rethinks the entire logic, is going to be the only economy in 10 years. Any company that's not on the path of decarbonization and the circular economy in a sustainable environment is going to fail and will be disregarded in less than 10 years. We are heading towards a sustainability revolution. That means that all of us will be subject to evaluation whether we are part of the decarbonization or not. I'm launching very soon a decarbonization pledge, I'm pledging myself to decarbonize as much as I can everywhere and as quick as I can. And that includes defunding companies, moving money out and divesting from companies that are not on the path to this big change of decarbonization. That includes not buying from those companies. That includes doing things that have uh, previously have been unheard of, including an increase in carbon taxes for flying, for meat, and for many other things. Yeah, that sounds like a tough story, but the World Economic Forum has said, roughly if we decarbonize and move towards what they call the nature intensive, the nature positive economy, we can generate trillions of new money and hundreds of millions of new jobs. This is a question of priority and of course a question of jet fueling science. All of that can be done. It's a question of decision making. The first one, digitization, is obvious, and I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's happening. The second one is subject to some major policy decisions because we're running out of time. We are literally at a fork in the road moment. At that moment in the next 10 years where we have to decide what future we want, we won't have much more than 10 years to solve this problem and we better get started now. This is utmost existential and it's going to be the main focus of many conversations we're going to have the next couple of years. Rapid decarbonization, that includes cars, it includes transportation, shipping, airlines, and so on and so on. Major decisions will be made and my decarbonization pledge is going to point that out in more detail. And this is a major thing, I think, along with digitization, of course, decarbonization can only be done with technology and new science. So Big Blue, not IBM, but Big Technology, and Big Green are hanging very closely together and we should invest lots and lots of resources in both, along with the policies and the right decision-making and the right political will.